All right, we're live here at the Pace Studio in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. We're with Jerry Joseph. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Thanks yeah, sound check has sounded great. Um, uh, short and sweet, um, but that is because uh, what you're doing is sounds so great. And uh, we're happy to have you here in advance of your show tonight at Eddie's Attic. Um, so thanks for making the stop. Hopefully you've got a little time to hang out and continue to get caffeinated uh, sure. while you're in town. I'm going to sleep under your kitchen table back That's there. That's fine. Keep you handing me Take a coffee. siesta on the couch. Perfect. All good. Wake up and do another session, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, well, I th we're going to hear at least three songs today. Um, and are some of them um, off of the newest album that you just uh, created with Patterson Hood of Drive-By Truckers? Yeah. Um, I think that I think, I think think that would be appropriate. I um, we have a new record. Patterson produced it, and his excellent band, the Truckers, played behind me. Um, kind of for the whole record. There's um, the Drive by Truckers. I think Jason Isbell plays on a track, and our our friend, um, the string genius from Portland, Kylie King. Um, and uh, we did it about a year ago, exactly. Um, tracked it in Mississippi, and. Now we're gearing up for the thing to come out. So, <clears throat> yeah, and it's not out yet. Do you do you have a, a specific release date or? Yeah, it's as soon as they give me the keys to the Talos building in Atlanta, and okay. we'll start there by throwing them off of that building, and then we'll go city to city. And the Bank of America it's Tower a new distribution it would be. plan. I think you know that's it, a pretty good plan. Um, <laughs> other than that, I think uh, the plan is for the record to come out in Europe in the UK in June, and then followed by the american release um i don't sound like i know what's going on very well it's I? all right sometime <laughs> after june in 2020 well exactly, sure. we're looking forward to that um and uh i'm sure the internet as well and let's uh let's get into it what are we going to hear up first today um this is the uh, first song on the record um this is called days of heaven i uh I have all these stories with this stuff, but most of this record was written in, in, in either Marin County, my brother's place in Mexico in Northern Baja or, or, or South Africa. This is one of the Mexican ones. Um, there's a small hot war going on um, around where my brother lives um, between the methamphetamine fentanyl makers and then the established cartels and the government. The, they would like the meth fentanyl guys to stop. And those guys are like, yeah, we've been living in the dirt for five generations. We're finally making money. So there's this thing, and it's going on outside of my brother's house, kind of. And so my brother is a big, brave guy, but he's also worries. And he, and he, and he insisted that I had the gun out on the table while I wrote these songs. I'm like, Michael, I'm a musician. He's like, oh, Jerry, you got to have the gun on the table in case they come in the back door and... So I wrote these, they're supposed to be, you know, a lot of these songs are about marriage and, and love songs, and, um, but hence the beginning of this song. This is called Days of Heaven. And, Back down on this porch Singing to myself With my brother 45 And I'm putting down the torch Surrender to the swell And I'm ready for the dive These are the days The days of heaven Yeah Heaven In a picture on a screen We hold each other close Perfect 
perfect in this place And of all the things I see I love this thing the most Amazing in its grace These are the days These are the days The days of the fire across us like a prairie locusts knock and the wolves will howl as I feel your heat beneath me fist and claw and the blood you drop as you make my blood your own cinematic as we crawl across the fields of skin and bone, nothing left but skin and bone, no. and a clutch of blood can cords, the reins of El Susal. We balance on the wide. the roar we're not afraid to fall come on baby can we get it any higher you ask me what I say to tell you something Sitting right. But in these heaven days, it's only about you. It has been all the Jerry, sounds oh, great, man. Thanks so much. You feeling good in this space? Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Well, good, good, good. It's all on my hands. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. Um, there's more coffee. We got you. Um, oh, goodness. Yeah. So that album we've already talked about. This is uh, this is like year thirty ish for you doing this thing. Um, you have put out almost uh, almost an album every year, or actually an album every year. I know that. I mean, it depends on what age. I think right kind of starting the. Early '90s. It seemed like it was a record a year. That doesn't necessarily mean those are records everyone heard. You know, right. Might have sold ten copies of them, but um, 
Usually, this is the first time I didn't put out a record in 2019. I think uh, a lot of things I've been learning from from my friend Patterson, but one of them is patience, and uh, it's not my it's not my strong suit. And uh, so it's an odd thing to kind of wait and yeah. I yeah, mean, there. I've, well, there's been a lot of uh, lamenting in this room about like, well, yeah, I finished the record, but then I have to, you know, wait six months or eight months or however long to actually put the thing out. So it's the novelty's gone for the artist by the time that it reaches to fans, and that's been a, a funny thing. And in this case, uh, it's it's releasing in a couple of phases overseas first, and then here. So, yeah, it's it's you know, I'm, I mean, the one thing is you hope that the songs, like that song I just played, I I have yet to get tired of playing it you know I, I um i think we were trying to pick songs that that resonated and um i'm actually kind of excited about the idea of uh i have this band the jack mormons and we have 350 originals or something and we'll do 10 or 10 to 15 nights and not repeat anything and what i'm excited about weirdly with this record is to like play the damn album every night and actually learn how to do that correctly like deliver I, I, i'm in awe of people that can do that and you know elton john can every night sing candle in the yeah, yeah, and, yeah 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 like like, like means it, you know? three and 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 three hours of meaningful songs meaningly meaningfully performed yeah i just got an opportunity to see elton in in uh, december oh. yeah it was like it's crazy like it, it they all sound like they're new to him they all sound like it's it's top energy level sure. yeah um who was it that was just in here? I think it was Vincent, uh, Vincent, and Randy from Leftover Salmon. We're, we're saying a lot of things about continuing on and what that means and finding ways of keeping it fresh and feeling fresh. And you know, there's there's no age limit on writing an effective song that you want to keep playing. So, no, no the trick is to the trick so. is there is is there an age limit of writing an effective song that a 22 year old gives a shit about? You know, right, 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 right. It's um, I keep kind of bumping this thing. I'm gonna push it. I'd hate to break the mic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Knock it over. It's fine. Uh, I'm just kidding. What are we going to hear up next today, Jay? Um, you know, there were so many notes from everybody about what songs I should play. Um, why don't we just jump right into the controversial ones? Um, this song is called Dead Confederate. Um, I have a history for being a super lefty Muslim commie Yankee or whatever I'm, I'm, people say about me. Um, I've been connected to a lot of Southern musicians for a long time. I was doing a tour with some of my friends who I think are very esteemed um, musicians and, and it was right about the time that the um, controversies of pulling down the Confederate statues was starting to happen. And uh, to be crystal clear, I, I think that every one of them should be pulled down and and um, ground into dust, not because I'm afraid of history or antiquity, but because I believe that most of those statues were put up during the Jim Crow era. I don't think anybody's great-grandfather crawled out of a ditch and carved lay into the side of the mountain. I, I, I think they were all put there for hate. People say... What about Lee? You know, what about what about he was a statesman and the greatest strategist of the of the of the nineteenth century? And I always say, well, what about Rommel? You know, Rommel was maybe one of the greatest strategists of the twentieth century and took all of North Africa. I've been to all those little towns in in Germany, and there are no statues of Rommel because he lost and he fought on the side of hate. And so uh, I wrote this song, and I don't really do character songs. There, I'm not Robbie Robertson. I can't really write a song about being a miner or a, or a sharecropper or something. So I rarely do that. I write, um, I have little guy Napoleon, Napoleon syndrome to the nth degree. It's me, 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 me. You know, my heart and my faith and my dick and my whatever, that's all I ever write about. So to write about a character takes away f from me, I think. And, and uh, but I wrote this, um, and this is a cool track. It's, it features, on the record, is Patterson, Jason Isbell, and uh, Kyleen, and um, I give this long intro to it because if you're not listening, you think that I'm writing a, um, uh, an anthem for, for the Confederate 
statue. But I think that if a Confederate statue was writing a song about himself, he wouldn't open up with, I'm a racist douchebag, wouldn't be the first line. He'd <laughs> say something noble about himself. And so it's called Dead Confederate. <laughs> Alabama, Alabama Heat lightning from the neck And all I see is project housing Chicken bones and broken bricks Standing I've been standing Best part of 80 years With my Jim Crow benediction Ropes and hoods and local cheers Fighting We were fighting and our namesake killed for southern gods Dying We were dying Lucifer's divine and right Selling We were selling the bodies of black boys and girls Yelling We were yelling A Rebel yell hurt around the world and I hate them, babe, I'm a dead confederate Eighty years I stood my ground And I ain't sorry I ain't regretting it Now they're trying to tear me down Hey now baby, I'm a dead confederate Rebel pride, a heart of stone And I ain't worried, and I ain't sweating it Wish they'd just leave me alone Alone And snowflakes, August snowflakes falling here in Birmingham. And I never claimed to think too deep. And I never said I understand. Swallowing my granite pride They haul me out to gravel pits They forget that I lived and died They smash me up to chips and bits We're buying and selling humans it Was good work if you could get it Well the South could build great pyramids Oh rise up if you let it But put their shine, their light of righteousness Upon my unclaimed darkest deeds Poison in my withered roots A poison in my righteous seed and Jesus was a white man And he promised we could rule So we burn his holy cross in honor I hang the negro and the fool And baby I will rise again Out on highway 29 
In the meantime, I join the earth and find my wicked sands of time. Yeah, yeah, baby, I'm a dead confederate. Eighty years, I stood my ground, and I ain't sorry, I ain't regretting it. Now they're trying to tear me down. Hey now, baby, I'm a dead confederate. Rebel pride, a heart of stone, and I ain't worried. I ain't sweating it. Wish they'd just leave me alone. Hey, long. Hey, long. Yeah, we're hoping that's the dance hit for the. Uh, nice. Yeah, that's the track. I can see why the uh, the contextualization is key before the song. <laughs> yeah, it's that's got to be the like... tricky thing about character pieces that I I haven't fully thought about until just now in this moment, where out of context, people are like, "Man, who is this?" Guy? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my wife she she hates it because she goes, you know, you get to the end of it, you feel sorry for the statue, you know, and and and. Well, it was not my point, but it's a, uh, yeah, and it always feels like it needs a little bit of a preface, you know? <laughs> no, completely agreed. Um, uh, and if you've missed that uh, clarity disclaimer um, character piece, uh, about written from the perspective of a Confederate statue, yeah. which I think is, and I was literally just last night, not to make this about me or my experience, but uh, was watching something where I, I think it was even like just some daily show piece or whatever. They were like, yeah, a lot of those statues were built way later to sort of counteract civil rights stuff Absolutely. in Jim Crow era. Martin Luther King. During Martin Luther King's lifetime, these things were being sure. erected. So they're not like, we lost the war. Let's put this up like, oh, we're, you know, not, uh, we're honoring these people. It was totally latent. It's all about hate. Totally it's, latent. It's, it's, and they were like cheap and chintzy. Like, yeah. like, the, like, <laughs> like they had to go, I think the joke, the, the punchline was that they had to go way down the list to find a sculptor that would make something kind of so, like, not great, you know, because yeah. uh, nobody else would probably take the job. The same guy that does garden gnomes in, in <laughs> St. Francis of sissy and those statues fully you know, but i mean it's a you know i i just i really strongly you know believe that the celebration of the confederacy is is horrific yeah. and i have no problem standing on a southern stage being like you know i don't care man your great grandfather died fighting for this war i'm like it was to buy and sell human beings. And I spent a lot of time in places where they're still buying and selling human beings. And I, and I, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's important that people not get a, not romanticize it, you know. But, and I'm a San Diego kid. That the first time I came to the South, I, would, you know, I loved all that stuff and all that history. And, and right, well, it is fascinating. It's uh, fascinating. But some, you know, so, so is the Holocaust and, and, and all of that stuff. But sure. no, but nobody's honoring those people. Or, you know, in this, no. And it's not, yeah, it's not even a conversation. No um, speaking of conversation. Well, maybe somewhere in Montana there might be a small group of guys well, like, yes, armed to the that's teeth. True. Really. But, but not, in, not, in, <laughs> not in or around Germany, I would, I would safely bet. Um, and, yeah, you have played in a lot of, you've, you've been all over the world with your music. Um, and in one of the ways that you, d one of the things you do while you're traveling is uh, the Nomad Music Foundation, and I'd love to hear more about what that is. It's a teaching, th it's teaching and resources for the under-resourced across the globe. How did you start? Get involved in? What's the? What's your take on that? You know, I think the 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 thumbnail. Um, I always cringe because I think again with my wife, she hears the word teacher and Jerry Joseph and. <laughs> And she like curls up in a ball. She's she's a teacher. A real right? a real bona fide <laughs> teacher, yeah. Yeah. Um it's it started. I I I have traveled in some weird places and um had been in a few different war zones or or tense areas. And so um through a friend of mine, Michael Lewis, um they asked if I would come to Afghanistan and uh and help in this in a in an underground rock school, um, which is a pretty noble endeavor for those guys of the 
government changed much in Kabul, they could they could die for that. You know? Right. And um, so we raised some money and we bought some gear and we and we went to Kabul and then um, that turned into a couple of American um, professors in. Uh, Suleimani, Iraq, which is up in Kurdish Iraq, had saw that and asked if I would come there. So now there's been two trips um, um, with, with mostly with the Kurds. And, and the last one was, was up in Duhuk, um, Iraq, which is or Kurdistan. And uh, on the Syrian border, all those kids are coming in. They're you know, literally coming out of ISIS slave camps and um, working with 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 Syrian Kurds and then inter internally displaced, so the Yazidi people, and, and basically, you know, we we bring a bunch of guitars, and um, if the kids and they're not little kids, you know, they're fifteen to to early twenties sometimes, and okay, um, we bring enough guitars if they hang out for three days and they get to keep the guitar, and I know that there's, you know, this last time one of the one of the young men that we'd met before. Um, came up and said, you know, I, I, I signed up because cause I knew you were giving away a guitar. I could sell it for whatever, it, you know. And uh, he goes, but it changed something. Then he showed uh, his acceptance papers to, to the University of Suleiman in music. You know, so you, you realize that you know, it might only be one kid. Right. Maybe. And it costs a lot to get the guitars over there and ship it and you know, all this stuff. It's kind of ridiculous. But I think of how much money people just spent sending me to rehab, you know? And that's far more than the last three times, you know, musical instruments that I've brought. So um, my friend Charlie Freeman and I, are we're, we're continuing along this thing. It's starting to open a lot of different doors um, of, you know, you you're going into pretty active war zones and, and you have to be cognizant of the fact, like, do they really need a guitar, you know? Right. <laughs> or do they need you know, a sandwich, you know, or a Kalashnikov? Or, or, yeah, know. or a shield or whatever, yeah. Whatever, yeah. So it's um, it's been this amazing thing. It's, you know, I, I mean, sadly, it's probably more amazing for me, you know, but I think that these, if nothing else, I'm I'm loud. I bang my head when I when I... We're gonna call it teaching. When I'm teaching, <laughs> I, I bang my head and yell and scream, and I think these poor kids, you know, it gets them out of, you know, the eight hours a day of of rape crisis, you know, classes that they're taking, and they can just come watch me be an idiot for a little while. And and and, and it kind of one of the ideas came from some some friends of mine that um, do the clowns without borders, doctors without borders, but with the clown stuff. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's uh, I don't know. It's something I've I've started doing, and I find it to be rewarding, and and um, and hopefully we're doing a lot more of it. Yeah, that's 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 very cool. Um, and that again, that is Nomad Music Foundation. Nomad so music I'm sure Foundation. there are ways to find out more about it, support it, etc. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think the easiest thing is just to go to if, if anyone remembers it. My name is Jerry Joseph at JerryJoseph.com. Um, and and they can get to it. No problem. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Joseph in the flesh here at Paste. What is the next song we're going to hear today? Um, I'm going to do one that we recorded that uh, that um, I, I can I can see I can see in, I can see eyes rolling right now in six states and two countries. <laughs> um, that's not on the record, um, but I'm doing it because. Dead Confederate is so quiet. I stole this cool A chord from, from His Golden Messenger. Um, this song is called Tick. In uh, South Africa, um, they call methamphetamine Tick. I think it's the most awesome name for a drug ever. You know, I, I think... Uh, that's what you do. You tick. I think they should call heroin scratch, and they should call cocaine annoying motherfucker that never shuts up. I think drugs <laughs> should a actually be called like what they are. And so, uh, um, so I wrote this song. I was down in Pringle Bay, South Africa. Um, the other thing that happened was I was eating, and a and big Afrikaner guy turned around, looked at me, goes, "You don't scratch my salad, man." I'm like, "What?" 
He's like, don't scratch my salad. I'm like, dude, I'm having the, the lamb, you know? And, and uh, But what it means is don't look at my girl. Oh. And it's one of those kind of weird colloquialisms. And I, I in, you know, I, in my defense, that, you know, I'm sure she was a badass, but the big Afrikaner girl, I, I wasn't scratching that salad. I was, I was eating my, my dinner. Um, but I wrote this song, and this is called Tick. And uh, <coughs> hopefully it comes out in some kind of, you know, alternative track or back of a 45 or something. Your coffee come right howling through the screen. I said I get it, but I don't know what you mean. Don't scratch my salad, man. Salad is in yours. Well, I wasn't even looking. I don't scratch much anymore. I see you, baby. You're starting to get sick. Try not to suffocate. Here and here is thick. And the fog is rolling in, starting to get dark. Get out the water, man, the water's full of shock. I don't like the way you're looking. I've seen that look before. And I wore that look myself, but I don't scratch much anymore. See you, baby. You're starting to get sick. Try not to fuffle, The air in here is dead. You better fix it. Better fix it quick. Take, 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 take. Yeah. We see the minutes tick away. And we're learning. We say the things we need to say while they're burning, burning. I see you, baby. You're starting to get sick. Try not to suffocate. The air in here is thin. You better fix it. Better fix it quick. Take, 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 take. Your brand new leather jacket packs a heavy load. Why you wear that jacket, man? It isn't even cold. And God and tribe and honor are more valuable than gold. Lift your finger off the trigger, your jacket will explode. I see you, baby. You're starting to get sick. Try not to suffocate. The air in here is Thank you so much. Yeah, Jerry, it sounds awesome, man. We also we've been talking for a while, which I'm is sure. which is killer. Um, if if we got one more quickie, we can knock it out. Otherwise, we'll just have to do this again. But it's completely um, your call. I could do one more. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, uh, we'll keep the talking to a minimum. But I gotta say, it's been a really fantastic hang. Um, 
and it's a pleasure to get to know you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming through. Any time that you want to come back and hang with us again, please do. I would love to. Yeah. I, I appreciate you having me. I'm going to... Uh, this is another character song. A friend of mine, songwriter John Barlow, um, pulled me into this, into this world of writing songs about Mormon outlaw songs. Um, people don't know that the, the Mormons had the breed of outlaws. Butch Cassidy would have been one. And there's sort of a long story to this. I was writing these songs with Barlow and a bunch of Bay Area people and I was in Mexico City and we were writing the songs by text and while I was waiting for the next text to come I wrote this this is another character this is a little easier for me to wrap my head around I have more um this one I'm a young um, Mormon girl I'm engaged to the to the outlaw it's much more in my wheelhouse there's been many times I've been engaged to Mormon outlaws. So. Mormon outlaws. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, easier. I heard about. I did read that in the Bible. I didn't want to bring it up though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm good with it. So this is called "I'm in Love with Hiram Black" and he's in love with me. He said he would follow the book. He swore it. Said I would wear my white dress and I wore it. He gave me a steal of his heart and I adore it. Well, I'm in love with Hiram Black. Nothing you can do. And I jump in his saddle. And I never look back This shout of love rings true It rings true Hey Well daddy said it's time We get back to Sonora Con los Palios Santos Del Dios Reforma well, these doctrines and covenants, they only were for you. Well, I'm in love with Hiram Black. He's in love with me. And I jump in his saddle and I never look back. The whole damn world can see, they can see. girl so easily deceived as all that a man says is to be believed but it came from my hand to be married and daddy I'm too well daddy I'm too said that he wanted it pure so I saved it His smell of blood and the desert, I crave it. God says we should give all our love, so I gave it. Well, I'm in love with Hiram Black. Together we will ride. And the saints may howl and the earth may cry. I'll be by his side, by his side, hey. Well, Hiram got down on his knees and he gave me the love. He promised to lay down his guns and follow the book. Girl, so easily to see 
is all that a man says is to be believed. But he came from my hand to be married, and daddy, I'm too. Well, daddy, I'm too. See y'all tonight at Eddie's Attic. Thank you so very much for having me. Yeah. And we didn't forget to plug the show. Thank you for that. So many great things we've talked about to DJ. I cannot wait to see you again, man. Well, thank you. I yeah. Appreciate it. Be well.